everyone welcome back to my channel I hope you're all doing really well and thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video for those of you that are here for the first time first of all welcome my name is Natalia and I am on a no buy this year I wanted to come on here and do my very first check-in I started this channel to document my no buy year to hold me accountable and to meet new friends here online that are possibly doing a similar project so if you are also on a no buy or a low buy please say hello down in the comments and please let us all know how your january went but yeah if you're interested in hearing whether my no buy was successful in the month of january and what my overall thoughts and feelings are and how things went then please keep on watching All right, so I've have jotted down some thoughts throughout the month as it went on. And I have a few things that I would like to discuss. And then I think some of them will probably turn into separate videos over the course of the year, because I'm going to start off with kind of the main point, And that is I found January overall to not be too, too challenging yet in my no buy year. I predict that this is going to change as the year progresses because of course as we all know with a new year come new resolutions and lots of excitement and lots of new inspirations and aspirations so a lot of our habits start off really strong and then after a few weeks of course people kind of lose steam and uh, other life events throw them back into the regular loop of things so I, I'm predicting that I'm going to have a similar thing, that I'm going to have slumps later on throughout the year where not buying things to make myself feel better is going to be a lot more challenging. This is not in the greatest order because as I said, I was writing things down kind of randomly throughout the month. So hopefully this will all come together and make sense at the end of this video. Overall, I haven't had too many temptations in the month of January. And there are some factors for that that we're about to tackle. I think if we're talking about makeup releases specifically in the year of 2020, there has already been so many things that have been done and redone. So I feel like part of the reason that it has been fairly easy for me to not be too tempted by a lot of the new makeup releases is that there have been, I don't want to say uninspired, but there has been a lot of repetition. And I would like to do a video later this month where I would like to talk about some of the latest makeup releases and my thought process on why I wasn't really excited about them to begin with. There are definitely a few things. There are definitely a few things on my imaginary wish list, but I think overall the makeup releases just in the month of January and the beginning of February, which is when I'm filming this, have been very much like if you've seen one palette, you've practically seen them all. The color stories are very similar and I just don't feel like there's that much innovation. For Valentine's Day, everyone's releasing reds and pinks with some purples. I mean, that's not exactly revolutionary. That's like the first thing we think about, right? When we think of Valentine's Day. Again, I don't mean, I don't mean to, you know, be judgy, but I'm just giving you my thoughts on why for me, it's been very easy to overlook those releases and to kind of not even give them a side eye and say, oh, I'm on a no buy, no big deal. This is not that inspiring anyways. Like I've seen this before. I have these colors. They might not all be perfectly in one palette exactly laid out the way we're seeing right now, but if I just use my imagination a little bit and if I just look through a few of my palettes, I bet I can come up with very similar looks to whatever people are creating right now with the Natasha Denona Love palette. I understand that brands have to follow that because that holiday is associated with those colors, but I kind of think that they could have made it a little more fun. I don't know, that's just, that's just my opinion. I'm sure that there is gonna be plenty of people that are going to love all of the winter and Valentine's Day makeup that's been coming out. And I've even seen my YouTube feed already flooded with uh, reviews and looks of the most popular new palettes that are coming on the market right now. Of course, as I sit here and complain about how brands are being lazy and releasing pinks and reds and purples for Valentine's Day, I myself am all clad in pink because 
I am hoping to create a three looks video for Valentine's Day for you guys. So, you know, I'm no better. <laughs> I'm no better than those brands. But at least it's making it easier for me to not be tempted by a lot of the things that are being released right now because I'm the one on the no buy. The brands definitely, you know, are not on a no buy. They want us to keep buying these similar looking palettes. And I guess, you know, I, I'm still enjoying those colors, but yeah, just not from new palettes. I'm just using what I already have. I just thought it would be really hypocritical of me, of course, though, to, to say all those things about how an inspiring it's been to see all the pinks and reds and purples while wearing this. <laughs> so, but I think you'll find the humor in it anyways, at least I hope. I think part of the reason and a big part of the reason for why also I have not been too tempted by any new makeup and skincare is because I've been really distracted by this new exciting thing in my life called filming YouTube videos. I really am enjoying doing things at my own pace. Um, I walked into this thinking, oh, I'm going to do at least two videos a week and very quickly after two videos I've realized with my schedule, that's not realistic and that's okay. I have tons of ideas for things. It's just gonna be a game of when, when I have the time. Any of you that are joining me for the first time might not know, but I'm a concert pianist and a music school owner. I teach six days a week and I have to find time to do all the administrative work for my music school and practice. So it's it's a busy life around here. <laughs> so yeah, but I've been loving filming. I'm learning a lot and I wish I could learn more. Obviously there's only so many hours in a day and I'm just taking it day by day and I'm hoping to learn lots of new tips and tricks. And as I do that, I will share them in some of my videos. If you watched a couple of my other videos, you know, sometimes I'll start off with these fun little tidbits and facts that I've learned about the making of YouTube videos along the way. I've really been enjoying doing things in my videos on my own terms. I think because I've been a YouTube watcher for over seven years, there's definitely been a certain formula that I think has prevented me from starting a YouTube channel for many years. You know, it seemed like there was definitely a time on YouTube where you had to follow a certain game rule of videos in order to be considered a quote unquote beauty channel. And I think in the past couple of years, because that has been shifting and because so many new channels, even if they're small channels, have opened the conversation to other topics within the beauty community and not just hauls and new makeup try-ons and tutorials only done with brand new palettes. And there's just been a certain routine to how things have been done for quite a while. So it's, it's been really nice and refreshing for me to come in and first of all, acknowledge the fact that I'm doing this as a personal project. I'm doing this to basically document my journey into not spending as much money this year, not buying any makeup and beauty products along with a few other categories. If you're curious actually about all the things I'm not buying, I will link a video that I did about my no buy rules and basically all of the categories that I am not going to be purchasing in this year. So yeah, because this is a personal project, I feel, I feel very free in creating the content that I want. I'm liking the fact that I can talk to you guys about makeup products without feeling like I am forcing anything on anyone. Of course, you're gonna see me rave about products, but it's not gonna be like, oh, this is the latest, greatest limited release. You must go out and buy it because I'm not gonna have that latest and greatest limited release. I'm going to have all the things from the prior years that I've purchased and hopefully you have some of them and we can have fun discussing whether we like these products or not. But if not, I'm just hoping you guys get some inspiration to go into your existing products and, and make them work and do fun things with what you already have. This is why I started my shop, my stash. This is why I'm doing uh, my panning project to discover what do I like enough to use it up 
And I like the idea of making up my own rules as I go and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. And I think because of that, at least so far in January, the, the no buy hasn't felt restricting because I have so much makeup and there's so much creativity to be had with all the makeup that I have that I just don't think it is necessary for me right now to be purchasing anything new to accomplish pretty much anything I want. So yeah, I've absolutely loved filming. I've loved interacting with the people that I've already gained as subscribers who have watched multiple of my videos and have been so sweet to start conversations with me in the comments. I, I'm already just feeling so, so grateful and I can't wait to get to know more people on this platform. So I'm really, really excited about that part. So, so far, the first thing that I've discovered is that with very few exceptions, the current releases have been fairly uninspiring to me and I haven't been terribly, terribly tempted. The second thing for January is I've absolutely loved filming and it's definitely been a huge distraction in the best sense of the word. Um, the third thing is I've really been enjoying thinking about content from the aspect of using what I already have and inspiring other people to use what they already have. And then the fourth thing that I wanted to discuss is what my relationship has been so far in the month of January with actually being in stores where there are products that I know I need to steer clear of. I've had to go in and just get a few things for the house or do some returns and I found myself at a TJ Maxx, I think twice. It's interesting because on the one hand, I, it's been very easy to just avoid the beauty department or avoid the clothing and the shoes department because I was going there specifically for certain house items that I knew I needed. Even though it's been very easy to avoid those departments, there's been this sense of tension that I can feel in myself every time I step into those stores. And I think that is because over the past year or two years, I should say in 2018 and 2019, I really have been trying to curb my beauty spending from stores like Sephora and Ulta. So I've instead uh, used all of my shopping energy and transferred it to stores like Marshalls and TJ Maxx because of course they have sometimes uh, sometimes their stores are a mess but sometimes they have some really amazing finds and a lot of the things that i will be using i'm sure throughout the year actually have been tj maxx finds but i think because i know a lot of the damage that i've done both financially and psychologically to myself in the past two years has been at those doors the moment right now i walk through those doors i instantly feel um tension and maybe even a little bit of fear that oh this is this is the place that can make me slip up this is the place that has the potential to make me break my no buy i had like that urge to at least go look go look to see what what is in the beauty section even though i'm not gonna buy it i was just curious to browse so definitely the habits are still there you know the urge is still there and when i don't have another distraction such as working or teaching or filming a YouTube video, definitely the instinct to browse and shop is still there. So I, 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 I'm gonna do, if you guys are interested, I would like to do a video about some tips for what I think I should do and others should try to do in order to have a successful no buy. And I think definitely trying to avoid some trigger stores as best as possible would probably make it onto that list. Yeah, let me know if that's a video that might interest you. Um, just some of my ideas for what to do and how to approach a no by year and kind of some of the things that we should consider doing. So feeling uncomfortable in the stores that sell items I can't buy, it really has left me with that feeling of, oh, I shouldn't be here. It's, I definitely feel a, a bit uneasy and a bit tense and kind of eager to leave even, to be honest, from those stores. So that has been uh, very interesting so far for me to discover in the month of January. One of the big 
things and I think this is going to be the overall theme of this year is expanding my why. I know I did a you know my initial introduction video to my no buy and I talked about some of the things that I think are causes for my shopping and some of the reasons for why I think I need to stop shopping and so some of them are very tangible reasons financial reasons and some of them are definitely a lot more deeper rooted to just how my psychology is wired by now and what my relationship is to shopping the shopping habits that I am trying to break now started oh started so many years if not decades ago and that's that's going to take me some time to really process and fully understand and I think another thing that I've been realizing more and more as I have you know stepped back from buying beauty and also honestly from watching other videos of people that have done a no buy is um how much I've put pressure on myself and how much I guess society puts pressure on us to look pretty, to feel pretty, to and how we feel like just getting that new thing it is going to suddenly improve that feature. I think this month was also the first time I've been truly honest with myself about the fact that in the past a lot of my purchases were guided by insecurities a lot of my purchases were guided by fears a lot of my purchases were guided by avoidance so i'm i've been thinking about that more and more and how i i felt like the outside articles are going to somehow make me feel better on the inside and of course you know that's not the case <laughs> i think definitely for me for a very long time whether i liked to admit it or not having that new thing was a temporary way to feel smarter, to feel prettier, to feel more confident, to somehow just feel better. And I'm curious to see how that's going to evolve this year and whether I can break that psychology and start to really appreciate me for who I am. You know, speaking of realizing who I am, I think that's going to be quite a discovery too, because I think when it comes to certain things in my life, I'm not really sure who I am. I, I don't know, honestly, if I can ever fully and eloquently verbalize what that thought process is going to look like. I, I am one who feels things and doesn't always know how to express them. So for that reason, you might not get the beautiful soliloquies of Hannah Louise Poston on my channel. It's, it's probably going to be a lot of indecisiveness and a lot of contradictions within myself and it's it's going to be a process if i do want to tackle some of those deeper subjects and eventually i do hope to it, it's probably going to take me some time to really understand how to verbalize and how to express the emotional process that is happening inside me i hope that you can understand that and i hope that you won't expect too much of me as far as that is concerned. I mean, if there are specific questions that arise, I can develop on further in future videos, great. But it's gonna be very hard for me to sit down during these check-ins and give you a very clean and concise thought process of exactly what happened in a month. I am in general one of those people that tends to be all over the place, especially when it comes to my own thoughts and feelings. And I'm sure this video is probably going to be all over the place for that exact reason. Hopefully as the year progresses and I do more and more of these check-ins, they will become a bit more concise and they will become a bit more clear and my thought process will be easier to follow. But for now, I think for the first few months, my brain is going to be a jumbled mess and I'm sure these videos are going to be a jumbled mess. And that's just part of this journey. That's just part of this process and you guys are here to witness it all unfiltered and unprocessed. And um, I think another main thing for this month, I touched on it a little bit earlier when I said I don't think I'll even be able to get through everything that I own in my shop, my stashes this whole entire year, is I just realizing more and more how much I have. I've just been so frustrated with myself at times. And I'm trying to let it go because that was part of, you know, this promise to myself that you're you're not gonna beat yourself up. You're you're gonna show everything 
you have on camera at some point and I still hope to do that. I'm just really struggling with how irresponsible I have been over the years and how stupid and how much money I've spent. I am seriously considering doing like an approximation of what my makeup collection is worth just so I have that sticker shock to always go back to, not just this year, but I think for many years to come. My God, I mean, and don't get me wrong, I love makeup and I am not saying I don't ever, ever, ever want to buy things ever again in my life. But this first month of really taking a step back and seeing how few products I've put in my January shop, my stash. And I'm not saying that I'm going to sit here and beat myself up for the whole entire year. I'm going to, of course, let it go. It's already been done. But I think I need that reminder once in a while just to, uh, you know, settle me down when I, again, start thinking about, ooh, I want this new shiny thing. Ooh, look at that eyeshadow palette with, you know, the 20 incredible new colors, 19 of which I probably already have, and they're just put in a different order and in prettier new packaging. Now that I'm filming and actually having a more tangible relationship with all of my makeup products, it's just making me realize, my God, woman, like how, how much makeup did you really expect to use in your lifetime? Like, what were you thinking? Again, I don't want to dwell on it, but it, it comes back. It cycles through me every few days, that's for sure. I have so much to learn and I have so much growth um, ahead of me in, in these departments because I, I feel like my shopping habits started very early on. I started to accumulate credit card debt, um, you know, in, in college years and it's basically been an up and down roller coaster ever since. And this year is going to be, I think, crucial for me because I really am tired of feeling like I'm a slave to my own bad habits. I haven't had financial stability or financial freedom ever in my life, and I know it's not gonna happen in this one year, but I definitely wanna make the steps towards it. So my why has definitely strengthened. I know I've already talked about it a little bit as I watch more YouTube videos and as I'm trying to dive into budgeting, not very successfully yet, but I'm really making an effort and that's what counts and with every month I hope to get better and better. So my financial why has greatly expanded over this past month. I'm just seeing with even more clarity how important it is for me to appreciate what I already have and to learn how to replace items, at least for now, while I'm not financially uh, stable with only necessities, only things that are absolutely necessary. I think that's pretty much it. To kind of summarize, it's been a mixed bag of feelings this month. Some things have been really easy to pass over and glaze through without even so much as a, a side eye. And some things have been more challenging. And the more challenging things I think have been internal battles that are starting and emotional things that I am now trying to sort of reorganize and find a shelf in inside myself for each one of my feelings and that i think is going to take a long time um but as far as just the actual act of shopping overall it's been fairly easy i walked into this uh, treating this not as a punishment but as an empowerment and Again, I think that's going to take a long time because I think there I'm going to go through a roller coaster of feelings and I think the main negative feelings that I'm going to come across are definitely going to be guilt, a regret for how responsible and stupid I have been, feeling overwhelmed at how much I have and how I will never be able to use all of it. While at the same time, I'm not one of those people that can just easily let go of things. <laughs> you will probably see me be one of those people that will want to actually try things a few times before I let them go. And I would like to let go of some items this year and part of why I'm doing things like Shop My Stash is to discover what do I like and what don't I like or at least what is not necessary in my collection. That's probably gonna take the majority of the year if not longer but so far, so good. It's overall been, I think, a positive experience. 
especially the filming part and especially the posting YouTube videos. There's just something really exciting about it. it it's still extremely scary and extremely daunting, mainly the technological end of things and no, actually probably the time end of things even more so. I think if time was not of the essence, I actually uh, have been enjoying watching YouTube videos and tutorials on how to edit and things like that and I'm sure that there is so much more to learn. I'm just very limited on time so I have to let go. I have to let my perfectionism kind of take a step back and say, you know what, this, this is the best you can do for today and that's gonna have to be good enough. And I think that's the overall message of this month is that even though I've had a lot of feelings of regret, feeling overwhelmed, I also have tried to come from the mindset of this is not a punishment, stop punishing yourself, stop having those thoughts, this is your process to empowerment. It's going to be a journey and I knew that and um, this month proved it, so yeah. I think that is where I'm going to wrap this up because otherwise I'm just going to be talking in circles forever. <laughs> and please, if you are on a no buy or a low buy, I'd love to hear how your January went. Please share. Did you have any temptations? What were they? Uh, did you have any breakthroughs or, you know, was it easy? In my case, it was busy as well. So there was really little time for any sort of distractions, which is great, hopefully. We're, we're gonna keep on sailing through. We can do this. So yeah, thank you again so much for watching. Please, please, if you haven't already, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'd love to have you and it will really help me meet more people on here as more and more people hopefully will get to see my videos as they become more and more recommended. And I can only do that with your help. So I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have a great one. Bye. Uh, I always forget which side. I think up here. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, wow. <laughs> I do believe it is up here. I just thought, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my gosh. Um, oh my God, Natalia. Speak English. What is the word you're looking for? Oh. I feel like my brain is a mess. The air... Blah, blah, blah. I'm... I'm at a loss for words.